Hi, this video is going to show you how I teach the Subcheck um, Opus 1 Part 1 School of Violin Techniques. Techniques. <laughs> and this is in the public domain now, so if you don't want to buy a copy, you can actually download it on many good sites. ISLMP. Oh, I'll put a link in the description down below of where a really safe, very cool site is where you can get all the public domain classical music you could ever want. I'm going to do number two uh, today. It's so similar to number one, but there are a few things that are different, and so at the risk of being redundant, I'm going to cover number two, and hopefully we'll work our way all the way through this book, because it's a very, very good book. So in Subcheck Opus 1, Part 1, Number 1, we, we stressed getting your perfect hand position, perfect intonation, getting on your perfect little targets, you know, on the corners of your fingers, not on the back side of your fingers, relaxing, not allowing yourself to squeeze, just having everything that you know is right, have it be right. Because it's easy when we're doing the slow, easy rep, repetition. And then we gradually, incrementally, start doubling the speed until you're playing pretty fast and hopefully maintaining perfect left hand form. So that still applies to number two and number three and number four. Keep an efficient, quiet left hand. Don't be moving around and doing all this extraneous motion that's not necessary. That'll slow you down and it'll interfere with your perfect technique. Okay, and when you go from the A string to the D string, the elbow swivels ever so slightly. Usually when I tell my students this, they overdo it. And so I kind of question the wisdom of telling them that. But I think you do need to know especially when you head towards the G string, the elbow does swivel off to the right a little bit, especially if you're doing intensive pinky work because he's so short. Um, if you're not even using the pinky at all, sometimes you can get away with just being lazy and keep it in neutral position, but usually we have to swivel. So you'll really notice that on subcheck number four where it's all on the G string. Okay, so. Let's look at uh, number two. It starts out very similar to number one. It's got quarter notes. And so what you're going to do is you're gonna slur four quarter notes and it's super easy. You're gonna put the metronome on 60 or any speed that you can handle well. 60 is a nice traditional number to start at, but you can start slower if you'd like to. You can start faster if you're sure that you're going to be able to have perfect relaxed technique when you get into the 16th note speeds. So here's 60. Okay, so that's a long bow. Da, 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 da. And right there, that requires technique to be able to do that. To pull a nice sound, that slowly requires skill. And you have you can't be too far from the bridge or you'll get you'll get that degraded sound. So when you're using a slow bow, um, it's advantageous to move away from the fingerboard and closer to the bridge. How close to the bridge you go depends on how loudly you're playing and what effect you want. If you're right next to the bridge, it's gonna be a little bit, um, it's gonna be loud and, and it projects very well right next to the bridge. But if you screw up or if you um, use too fast of a bow stroke, you'll get a really bad scratch. So it's kind of a risky place to be. Somewhere in the middle and closer to the bridge than, than to the fingerboard is where I would recommend that you play number two because of the slurs and because you're on the D string where we need a little extra punch. Moving closer to the bridge gives you a little bit more punch. Okay, so we turn it on to 60, and then for the first four lines, you're going to do this. You're gonna slur four, slow, perfect. Then you're gonna double it. And then you double it again. So, 
Your bow always lasts for four clicks on that one. It's like a whole note. You just go from slurring four quarter notes per bow, and then you slur four eighth, eighth notes per bow, and then you slur 16 16th notes per bow. But it's still four beats, it's still just a whole note. Okay, so that's all repetition from subcheck number one. And then subcheck number one had a 3-4 measure that we had to show you how to handle that. And there's so many right ways to do this, and uh, not as many wrong ways as you might fear. So if you don't do it exactly the way I say, just make sure it's systematic, it's predictable, and that you're relaxing your left hand and you have good left hand form, and you'll get the value that you need to out of this. Okay, so sub check number two doesn't have a 3-4 section at all, but it does move into eighth notes, and they're, they're an eight note pattern, not just a four note pattern. So I'll show you how I handle that. So the fifth, on, in my edition, the fifth line down um, is this. <laughs> That's the first bar, and it's eighth notes. So what I do is I slur two quarter notes first. So watch this. I go like this. And all the way through that, I'm paying attention to no squeezing of my left hand. I'm listening to my intonation. I'm trying to get a clean bow stroke without hitting extra strings. It's easy, and so it must be perfect because it's easy. All right, then after you slur two, and I'm thinking of those as quarter notes, then I'm gonna slur four, and they'll be twice as fast. They'll be eighth notes, like this. One, two, three, four. Now, when you're deciding how many times to do each increment, you gotta base it on what your needs are. Um, I find that it's most beneficial if you do slur the two when you're doing just the quarter notes, do that once. When you're slurring the fours or the, the eighth notes, I like to do that twice, you know why? Because it gives me two practice runs in the medium speed to get the hand pattern down and the note pattern before I have to quadruple the speed and play the 16th notes. Often once through the medium speed isn't enough. So you gotta base it on what your needs are. If you're a whippersnapper and you can get it on just one repetition through the medium speed, then do one repetition, save your time. Okay, we will be doing once through the quarter notes, twice through the eighth notes, and twice through the 16th notes. So now let's do bar one and two. We'll go from one to the other so you can see how that transition works. Okay? Bar one, two, ready, slur, two. One, four, remember that, slur, four. Again. Okay, so this takes a lot of focus and it's very good for your brain, as well as for your hand, as well as for your bow. Okay, so we do two, two lines like that. And then Sevchik displays 16th notes. So the first speed is eighth notes. So we no longer have the luxury of starting at the quarter note speed. We're doing eighth notes and we're slurring four like this. Ba -da 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 eighth notes two per click. Then the next speed is I slur eight sixteenth notes. So I've doubled my speed and I go through that one time. And to slur eight notes at a time, that one would require two bows for the whole bar. If you're looking at your music, you'll see that that makes sense. And then the third speed I do is the same speed. I do sixteenth notes again. I don't go to 32nd notes. You could if you want, but I don't. Um, I slur 16 of them though. So I double the number that I'm doing in my bow 
and that forces me to change my bow speed and it's it's a good skill to be able to spontaneously change your bow speed to allow for more notes in a bow. Let me show you how that works. Okay, I'm gonna focus and learn what this finger pattern is as quickly as I can because it's gonna get fast real quick. Slurring four, and these are eighth notes. One and two and ready and go and. Ooh, that's tricky. Now I'm gonna slur eight. I forgot to tell you that um, I I do the 16 slur twice for the mainly because I like to start the next bar on a down bow and I don't know extra repetition extra practice that's there's no right or wrong if you don't like doing that don't do it let's try bar number two together and I'm gonna warn you it is extremely a random type pattern there's a little bit of a pattern to it but you your focus needs to be turned on to the maximum and pay attention to what the lower notes are doing versus the upper notes and it'll help you to uh, solidify your left hand before you start into the 16th note speeds <laughs> okay and um, you might find that you need to do the slow speed three or four times before you launch into the 16th notes that's okay Make sure you, you give yourself what you need. And as you get better at this, you will no longer need four repetitions. You'll be able to do it once slow and then fast. And that's what's the reason you're practicing this, is to get your brain training and your finger response in sync. Okay, here we go. Bar two of the 16th notes. We're gonna slur four, then we're gonna slur eight, and then we're gonna slur 16. Okay, here we go. I'll try to count, I'll try to call it out. Ready, eighth notes. Slur eight. See, I uh, didn't plan out my bow speed well enough. So, and I also forgot to yell slur 16. So we're gonna do that one again. And um, I'll try to call it out and you try to shift your bow speed with me. Here we go, eighth notes, slur four, one, two, and ready, and slur four. Whole bow. Slur eight. isn't it? Okay, and that pattern is exceptionally hard, I think. I have to really be thinking and paying close attention to the notes um, to be able to do the, the fast speed. Now, I didn't exactly love my tone on when I was slurring 16s either, and not only was that because I didn't handle my bow speed properly, that's an example of when I needed to move closer to the bridge. So if you find that you're just getting a, a squished or a croaky sound on, when you're slurring 16s, try moving closer t to the bridge. It'll work like a charm. And like I said, there's many, many right ways to do this. So if you're not doing it exactly in every little increment the way I'm telling you to, it's okay. As long as it's systematic and predictable so that you know what change is coming up so that you can double your speed and have your left hand remain absolutely perfect and relaxed that's the main point of these exercises. Of course, there's bow value to these exercises as well, but the main thing is your left hand technique. All right, so that's it for number two. I'm gonna shoot out number three here really quick, so I'll see you there.